For today's lesson, we will be discussing about system of nonlinear equations. Let's define first what is system of nonlinear equations. A system of nonlinear equations consists of two or more equations with at least one equation that is not linear. During grade 8, you already encountered system of linear equations wherein we have their two or more linear equations that we consider at the same time. But since this one is system of nonlinear equations, there should be at least one equation at least one equation that is not linear so it can be a quadratic equation or it can be an equation of a conic section for example we have here system of x equals negative 3 and y equals the square of x minus 3 plus 1 so as you can see here in our two equations the first one, which is x equals negative 3, is a linear equation because the degree is 1. Whereas with the second equation, which is y equals the square of x minus 3 plus 1, this is not a linear equation because if you will simplify this, the degree now will be equal to 2. So it's now a quadratic equation. So this is an example of system of nonlinear equations. Now for the solution of systems of nonlinear equation. So it is an ordered pair that makes all the equations in the system true. So for the solution, we write it as ordered pairs. So that means we have to identify the values of x and y. That will make our equation or all of the equations in the system true. This means that whenever we substitute the given ordered pair, it will be true for both of them or for all of the equations. A system of nonlinear equations can have no solution. There can be one solution or many solutions. It depends now on the equation given to us. So if the system of nonlinear equations have no solution at all, that means the graph of the two equations do not intersect. If there is one solution only, that means the graphs of the two equations intersect once. And for many solutions, that means they intersect at more than one point. Now, how are we going to solve systems of nonlinear equation? So, we have two methods. First is by substitution. Another one is by elimination. I know these methods to you are familiar since these are also the methods that we used when we solve for systems of linear equation. So, we will just do the same thing. So, the process that we know for substitution and elimination will still be applicable. So, to recall, in substitution, in this method, we isolate a common expression in one of the equations and substitute the equivalent value of this expression into the other equation. So that's why it's called substitution because first, you isolate the common expression and then after that is you substitute the value that you obtain to the other equation. So it's like we're using one of the equations, we manipulate it in order for us to have a value for one of the variables in our equation. For elimination, so in this method, we eliminate one of the variables in both equations. So that's why it's called elimination because we're trying to remove or eliminate one of the variables. So how are we going to eliminate? So of course, the terms must have the same variables. They should have the same numerical coefficient, but they should have different signs. So now let's solve the following systems of nonlinear equations using substitution. Let's say we have this system, x squared plus y squared equals 16 and x minus y equals 4. Again, the method that we will be using here is substitution. In using substitution, we have to use one of the equations present here. And then, given that equation that we chose, we have to use it and identify a value of one of the variables. In this case, we have x and y. So, you just have to choose any of the two. But between the two, I think it's easier if we will consider equation number two. So, this is our equation number one. This is our equation number two. So, using equation number two, x minus y equals four. We have to manipulate this in order for us to have value of x or value of y. Okay, so you just have to choose. It's either you use x or y. 
So let's try to use x. So we have to identify what will be the value of x using this equation. So in order to do that, you have to move the other variable on the other side so that we are just isolating the variable x on the other. So we just have x here equals and then our negative y here, you move it on the other side so it will become y and then we have plus 4 here. So as you can see, using equation number 2, we're able to identify a temporary value for x which is y plus 4. Now that we already have the value of x which is y plus 4, we will use it and substitute it to the other equation. So we have our equation number 1 which is x squared plus y squared equals 16. Now, we have to use the value x equals y plus 4 and substitute it here. So, this will become y plus 4 squared plus y squared equals 16. And then, after that, you just have to simplify. So, y plus 4 squared, you can use the FOIL method or you can use the technique. Square the first term. We have y squared. Multiply both the terms and then multiply to 2. So 4 times y is 4y times 2, we have 8y. And then square the last term. So we have 16. Again, if you cannot remember the technique or the shortcut for the square of binomials, you can just do FOIL method. You, you will still get the same answer. And then plus y squared equals 16. Now, after this, all we have to do is to simplify further. So, we can combine y squared and y squared. That will give us 2y squared. And we can just have here plus 8y. You can move 16 on the other side. So, that will be minus 16 or just 0. So, 2y squared plus 8y equals 0. Now, from here, we have to simplify this so that we can identify the values of y. So let's just write here 2y squared plus 8y equals 0. Now as you can see, these two terms here, 2y squared and 8y, they have a common factor. So we can do common monomial factoring here. So as you can see, for 2 and 8, their common factor is 2. And for y squared and y, their common factor is y. So, it's like we are extracting the common monomial factor between the two terms. And then, let's see what will be left if we will extract 2y. So, if we will remove 2y from 2y squared, we will just be left with y. And then, for 8y, if we remove 2y, we will just get 4 equal to 0. So, again, what we did here is we do common monomial factoring. So, the common monomial factor of... 2y squared plus 8y is 2y. And then, we just have to multiply it with the remaining factor, which is y plus 4. Then, equal to 0. After this, since we have two factors, 2y and y plus 4, just equate both of them to 0, and then solve for the values of y. So, y plus 4 equals 0. So, here, if you divide this by 2, you'll just get y equals 0. So, that's the first value of y. And then, here, y equals negative 4. So, this is the uh, second value of y. Now that you already have the values of y, 0 and negative 4, we can now use this to identify what will be the corresponding values of x. So, if y is equal to 0, what will be the value of x? So, you have to use this equation again so that it will be easier. So, we have x equals y is 0 plus 4. So, x is equal to 4. Therefore, if y is 0, our x is 4. So, if we will write it as ordered pairs, so we have 4, 0. So, this is now our first solution. After that, let's solve for y equals negative 4. So, we will be using the same equation. So, if y is negative 4, what will be the value of x? So, substitute negative 4 plus 4. So, x equals 0. So, if y is negative 4, our x is 0. Therefore, if I will write it as ordered pairs, we have 0, negative 4. Therefore, the solutions now of this given system of nonlinear equation is we have 4, 0, and 0, negative 4. 
So that means if we will graph these two equations, they will intersect at these two given points. So now if we will just try to graph the two systems of nonlinear equations using the Desmos, we can see clearly where is the solution or where are the intersections. So first is we have x squared plus y squared equals 16, which is a circle. And then we have x minus y equals 4, which is a line. So as you can see, this is the circle, this is the line, and they intersect at these two points, which are 4, 0, and 0, negative 4. So there you go. So the intersection of our two equations will be the solution of the given system of nonlinear equation. For our next example, let's have x minus y plus 2 equals 0 and y minus 1 equals x squared. So as you can see, again, we have here a linear and a quadratic equation. So again, we're still using the substitution method. So what we will do is we have to identify which among the two equations should we use so that we can identify a value of y or a val the value of x. So again, this is our first equation. This is our second equation. Looking at this two, I think it's easier if we will use the second equation, which is y minus 1 equals x squared. Anyways, if we will use the first equation, um, your solution will be different, but the final answer will still be the same. So we have here y minus 1 equals x squared. Now looking at this, what we can do is we can just move negative 1 on the other side so that we'll just have y equals x squared plus 1. So by moving negative 1 on the other side of the equation, we already have temporary value of y which is x squared plus 1. Now we will use this value in order for us to identify the value of one variable which is x. So what we will do is let's use the first equation and then let's substitute. So we have x minus y plus 2 equals 0. Now we know that y is equal to x squared plus 1. So let's write here x minus and then for our y we have x squared plus 1 plus 2 equals 0. Now since this is a binomial and then we're subtracting it to x, so what we will do is let's distribute the negative sign. So we have x minus x squared minus 1 plus 2 equals 0 and then simplify. So here we have x minus x squared plus 1 equals 0. Now if we will arrange this, we'll have negative x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. And we want x squared to be positive, so let's just multiply it by negative 1. So x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. Now as you can see, we now have here a trinomial. Okay, and as what we know, whenever we have a trinomial, we have to factor. So looking at the numbers, we have here for the last term is negative 1. Is it possible for us to think of factors of negative 1 that when we add, the answer is also a negative 1? So with that in mind, uh, we cannot identify a value or factors of negative 1 that will give us negative 1 when we add it as well. That means this given trinomial is not factorable. If it's not factorable, therefore, we have to use the quadratic formula in order for us to identify the values of x. So just to recall, the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So before you can use the quadratic formula, you have to find the values of a, b, and c. So a is the coefficient, numerical coefficient of the first term. B is the numerical coefficient of the second term and C is for the last one. So A is 1, B is negative 1, C is also negative 1. And then let's just substitute these values to our quadratic formula. So negative, negative 1 plus minus square root of B squared. So negative 1 squared minus 4 times A which is 1 times C which is negative 1 all over 2 times a, which is 1. Then let's just simplify this. 
So this will be positive 1 plus minus the square root of negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 1 is positive 4. Then all over 2. Simplify it even more. We have 1 plus minus the square root of 5 all over 2. Now we cannot do anything about this so that means these are now the values of x. So we have 2. We have 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 and we have 1 minus square root of 5 all over 2. So there are two values of x now. After identifying the two values of x, we have to identify what will be the corresponding values of y. So again, we have two values of x and then what we will do is we have to substitute each values of x to this given equation in order for us to have the value of y. So let's start with x equals 1 plus square root of 5 all over 2. So let's substitute. So we have y equals then squared 1 plus square root of 5 all over 2 squared plus 1. Now, to simplify this, you have to square the numerator and then square the denominator. So, we have 1 plus square root of 5 squared all over 2 squared plus 1. For the numerator, so since this is a binomial, you can do FOIL method or you can still use the shortcut that I used a while ago. So, square the first term. So, that is 1. Multiply the two terms and then times 2. So 1 times square root of 5, square root of 5 times 2. So that it posit that is positive 2 square root of 5. And then square the last term. So what is the square of square root of 5? So that will be 5. And then the denominator is 4. And then plus 1 here. So just continue simplifying. So we have y equals. For the numerator, we can add 1 and 5. So that is 6 plus 2 square root of 5 all over 4 plus 1. You can still simplify this because all of the terms in this fraction, they have a common factor which is 2. So we can simplify. So what we will do is, uh, let's divide all of them by 2. So this will become 3 plus, this will be just square root of 5, 4 divided by 2, we have 2, and then plus 1. So, the 1 here, we have to add it, but since this one is a fraction, what we will do is, we have to rewrite 1 as a fraction whose denominator is also equal to 2. So, that will be 2 over 2, so that when we simplify this, this will just be equal to 1. And then, we can now add, so 5 plus the square root of 5 all over 2. So therefore, this is now the first value of y. So that means, if x is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, the corresponding value of y is 5 plus square root of 5 all over 2. So this is the coordinates of our solution. So let's continue with the other value of x, which is 1 minus square root of 5 all over 2. So we just have to substitute again. So this will become 1 minus square root of 5 all over 2 squared plus 1. Then you square the numerator and square the denominator as well, and then plus 1. Then we have here y equals, so in squaring the numerator, you can use the square of binomial or you can again do FOIL method. So square the first term, multiply the 2 and then times 2, so that's minus 2 square root of 5. And square the last term, so that is plus 5. All over the square of 2, which is 4, then plus 1. Then let's simplify more. So 1 plus 5 is 6 minus 2 square root of 5 all over 4 plus 1. So like what we did with the first value of x, we can still simplify this. Divide all of the terms by 2. So you have 3 minus square root of 5 all over 2 plus 1. And then we can add 1 here, but we have to change it first into a fraction 
whose denominator is also 2, so that we can add it with the other fraction. So that will be 2 over 2. Y equals 3 plus 2 is 5. Then just copy minus square root of 5 all over 2. So therefore, this is now the second value of Y. This means that if the value of X is 1 minus square root of 5 all over 2, the value of Y will be 5 minus square root of 5 all over 2. So this is now our second solution. Now to show you the graph of the two equations together with the solutions, let's again go to Desmos. So we have first the x minus y plus 2 equals 0. So it's a linear or it's a line. Next is y minus 1 equals x squared, which is a parabola. So these are the graph of the two uh, equations. And then for the, our solution, so first one is this, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, 5 plus square root of 5 over 2. And then the other one is 1 minus square root of 5 over 2, 5 minus square root of 5 over 2. So these two points are the intersection of the line and the parabola. So that means they are the solutions of the system of nonlinear equation. Now let's solve for the following system of nonlinear equations and this time we will be using elimination method. So again afterwards we will be using Desmos to show the graph of the two equations in the given system. So let's say we have y squared minus 4x minus 6y equals 11 and 4 times 3 minus x equals y minus 3 quantity squared. So as you can see here, we have two quadratic equations. So what we will do is, again, we will be using the elimination method. And as what we know with elimination method, we have to eliminate a variable by adding them. Wherein, there are terms with same numerical coefficient and same variables but with different signs. So by just looking at this, two equations here, we cannot do elimination right away. So what we will do is, we will manipulate first or simplify or expand the equation first in order for us to see clearly what are the variables that we can eliminate. So this is our equation number one, this is our equation number two. So in this case, let us use equation number two and let us expand this. 4 times 3 minus x equals y minus 3 squared. So, again, we will expand this equation. So, distribute 4 to 3 minus x. So, that is 12 minus 4x equals, and then this y minus 3, we square this. So, we will have y squared minus 6x minus 6y plus 9. Again, you can use the FOIL method or you can do the shortcut for square of binomials. Then after that, let us combine all of the terms on one side of the equation and then let's just leave all the constant terms on the other side as well. So since y squared is already here, let's just transfer 4x on the other side and then 9, we put it on the other side. So let's just exchange the two. So we have 12 and 9 you transfer, so we have minus 9 equals, then we have y squared minus 6y plus 4x. Then simplify, 12 minus 9, we have 3 equals, and then let's just arrange this so that it will be the same with the first equation. So let's write x first. So y squared plus 4x minus 6y. So we now have this 3 equals y squared plus 4x minus 6y. Or if we will just change or interchange the two, we have y squared plus 4x minus 6y equals 3. So as you can see, comparing it with the first equation, they are now similar when it comes to their form. So what we will do next is, we will now eliminate. So let's write the first equation. And then below it is we'll write the second one. Then let's now do elimination. So in elimination, again, we have to cancel out 
terms that have the same numerical coefficient and variables but with different signs. So by just looking at these two sets of equations, we can cancel out 4x and negative 4x. And then for the remaining terms, simply add them. So y squared plus y squared, we have 2y squared. Negative 6y plus negative 6y, that is negative 12y, equals 1 plus 3, or this one is 11 rather, 11 plus 3, we now have 14. Now from here, we can now solve for the values of y. So let's just move all of the terms on the other side. So 2y squared minus 12y minus 14 equals 0. So this is now a trinomial. Before we factor... Uh, we can still simplify this, so divide all of the terms by 2. We'll have y squared minus 6y minus 7 equals 0. And then let's now start to factor. So let's check if this one is factorable. So you think of factors of negative 7 that when you add, the answer is negative 6. So we can have negative 7 and positive 1. So let's try it y minus 7 and then y plus 1 so negative 7 times 1 is negative 7 negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6 so we have now these two factors equate each to 0 so we now have y equals 7 for the first value of y and we have y equals negative y for our second value of y now, after that, after solving for the values of y, we now have to solve for the values of x. So, we will be using this same equation, which is the one that we manipulate a while ago, and then substitute it here. You can use also the other one, the first equation, so it depends on you. You will still get the same values. So, let's have if y is equal to 7. So, 7 squared plus 4x minus 6 times 7 equals 3. This is 49 minus 42 equals 3. Then simplify. We have 4x plus 7 equals 3. 49 minus 42, we have 7. And then let's move 7 on the other side. So 4x equals 3 minus 7 or 4x is equal to negative 4. And to solve for the value of x, just divide both sides by 4. Therefore, we have x equals negative 1. So that gives us now the first value of x. Thus, we can say that if x is negative 1, then the corresponding value of y is 7. So this is now our first solution. For the second, let's have y equals negative 1, which is the second value of y. So let's do the same thing. Let's use the same equation. So negative 1 squared plus 4x minus 6 times negative 1 equals 3. So this is 1 plus 4x, then plus 6 equals 3. And then simplify 4x plus 7 equals 3. Again, move 7 on the other side. So that is 4x equals 3 minus 7. 4x equals negative 4. Again, divide both sides by 4. Therefore, we have x equals negative 1 as the second value of x. Thus, if y is negative 1, we can say that x is also negative 1. So this is now our solution. Now, let's check the graph of the two equations from the system. So, let's have first the y squared minus 4x minus 6y equals 11. So, this is a parabola that opens to the right. Now, if we will plot the other equation, this is again a parabola but this time it opens to the left. So, as you can see, there are two points of intersection of these two parabola, which are the solutions that we obtain. So, we have negative 1, 7, and negative 1, negative 1. So, again, these are the graphs of our equations from the system. And then, these are now the solutions or the intersection 
These are not the solutions, which serves as the solutions of our system of nonlinear equations.